So today I was just thinking of something to do, and then I thought of, uh, why not humiliate these guys again? But today is just not an ordinary day to humiliate them. I plan to take Moscow by 1937. Now you might think this is just plain simple and possible and all, but trust me, it is possible. You can easily exploit the AI into doing stupid shit, and you can easily win. And to do that, we're just gonna declare on them as soon as possible. This might- this video might also go to show how wickedly strong Germany is and how bad you can be at the game and still easily win with them. Basically, all I'm going to even do here is justify onto the Polish as soon as I can once I hit 50 political power. And we're also gonna rush the, uh, the focus where we can take out them with the war goal. Which, see, it seems stupid, I know, but it, it actually works. Now, because Germany is like the only army in the world that actually is fully equipped at the start of the game, what you have the ability to do that a lot of other countries won't is just spam divisions like you don't care. It's also very important that we train these guys because if they are greens, they are going to suck a lot. And now that we have completed the uh, USSR focus, we're just going to casually annex Austria. They have some divisions that we could use. Here we go. Now we've got an extra nine troops. Although we aren't going to put them into the main army over here, that would be on the front line of the Soviets. We'll, we'll use them for something else. We'll just let them hang out here for now. While that happened, we also got our justification finished on Poland, so let's just end them right now. This should be a fairly easy war. Unfortunately, I also had this army still exercising. They're pretty bad, but I, I don't think it'll be an issue. Yeah, within a couple of hours, you'll start to see these open spots in the middle of them, and you can just walk in with these. They won't really compete with you at all. You're already taking war sauce, so that's, that's just proof that this is going to be easy. There we go. Ten divisions in circle right there. So yeah, as, as expect, you should be able to wipe them out pretty easily. We'll also get a third spy, because we need to see what that cranky boy Stalin's up to. Also, because he gets a uh, nerf to his entrenchment, that's pretty useful as well. So pretty quickly, Poland's basically completely crippled. They have no one left on the front line, because a lot of them are trapped up here. So we'll take complete advantage of that and just walk through to the Soviet border. We will proceed to have our second match. And there you go. Normally, I would care about cool borders and make a cool puppet state and stuff. I'm not going to do that this time because we're just messing around. But now we're going to declare war on the Soviet Union. And now that our guys are up here with the Soviets, you might as well declare war on them and just let them bash their heads into us. As you can see, even with tw with uh, 70 divisions, they, they can't win. And if you really have to, you can just micromanage like this. Just rub in their face some more, why don't you? So this is what we really call mocking the Soviets. Oh boy. Well, let's not look over here. I would also recommend that uh, we put our air in eastern Poland. So that we aren't getting completely destroyed up there. We can actually bomb them and it'll make it even worse for them. We will probably lose a few provinces. Typically I lose this one and a couple up here, but it's no big deal. It is not worth it for them. They will lose, like, their entire supply line by the time they get there. So, don't be worried. So, it will only take a matter of months before you start to see that yellow bar drop to, like, half and below. It's pretty easy to do when you're fighting the Soviet Union. Even if they manage to take two provinces, maybe three. But um, now that they literally can't win a single fight, I might as well go on the offensive and see what happens. Spoiler alert, it's going to be a disaster for them. But uh, yeah, there you go. May of 1937, we're already able to push them back. This is basically class A humiliation. Well, that's what the point of this video is, so um, we're doing pretty good so far. And with the three tanks we have, we might as well just go full out bullet screening them. There you go, Minsk. There you go. Look at that, 14 divisions as we just begin our invasion. And this isn't with the Great Purge really either, because they have the uh, Great Patriotic War that pretty much bounces it out. So this is just the Soviets sucking. But as you will see as we invade them, that the tanks are going to be a very important part of this war, and you're not going to want to lose them. 
If you manage to get them encircled somehow, some way, you might be in some trouble. You won't... I mean, you'll probably win still, but you won't be able to kill them as quickly. And what's the whole point of this, isn't it? But yeah, as you can see, I can easily just ride into Moscow right now. I'm probably going to wait a little longer because I don't want to get my tank encircled, but... This is just goes to show you can easily kill the Soviets. And honestly, they might need to be buffed. Or maybe I'm just that great at the game. And there we go. Take Mo We took Moscow in August 2nd of 1937. Two years before the war started in our timeline. Welcome to Holy Four, folks. Yeah, you will take Moscow before you, you take Kiev, so don't be shocked if that happens. We don't really care that much about Kiev, though. Kiev's not a big flex like Moscow is. Now, when you do start to have games like this, you, you begin to think, uh, what the hell did Hitler do to lose in the real war? But I'm sure that's just this game's unbalancing. Yeah, it gets it starts to get extremely easy to encircle the troop, their uh, army like this. That time it won't happen. When I say it, of course. Now, while we did take uh, Moscow and Leningrad, we are still quite a ways away from Stalingrad. So let's go fix that right now. Let's see if we can take it within a month. I don't. I doubt it because it's far away. But we'll see. Oh. <laughs> oh God. Uh. That might be a bad thing. Okay. Thank God I managed to rescue them like in the nick of time. That was pretty dangerous. We should not be that. <laughs> we should probably not do that again. It looked cool in the first week, though. I'm not going to lie, but that was a very risky plan. I think they're pretty... Like, I don't think they have a chance anymore. And one thing what I advise you to do is... I've learned this every time I invade the Soviet Union. Once you get to Crimea, always take at least four divisions or so. And make sure you actually are going to invade here because when you when you have a big order like this the thing the wherever whatever your controls the front line stuff is stupid and it, it leaves crimea behind and the soviets will definitely take full advantage of that and before you know it you will see a huge blob over here that's about to cut you off and it's a disaster so yeah now we've taken sevistopol and i don't think there's a any return for the Soviets at this point. 62 divisions. <laughs> 62 divisions as the Soviet Union. That is never a good thing. If you have 62 divisions as the Soviet Union, you might as well have zero because you're, you're fucked. Woo. That's every major city that the Soviet Union has, and we took it by March 21st of 1938. That ought to be embarrassing. But it gets to the point where you basically can just... You can make these huge lines like this and this. They won't do anything about it, because you've basically won at this point. And the AI does, believe it or not, actually give up at a certain point. And I believe you're starting to see that with the Soviets right now. Yeah, I, I think you know what's coming right here. But if you don't, let me just show you really quickly. There. That's what's gonna happen. I can basically do this now without penalty. <laughs> you don't mind me, I'm just gonna quickly snatch all your victory points. Don't mind me one bit. I would just like it if you did absolutely nothing about this. I believe that is exactly what you're doing, too. Absolutely jack shit. Don't mind Stalin with his 27 to 35 divisions, guys. He's not going to be doing anything anytime soon. But after snatching all of these victory points over here that are worth like 5 and stuff, we're just going to... We're just going to take a quick, quick detour up to here. You don't... Don't look this way at all. Uh-oh. 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 That's bad. That's really bad. Uh, I probably shouldn't panic too much. It's not like they have any divisions to... <laughs> it's not like they have any divisions to even kill them with. 
And there you go. June of 1938, and you already killed the big boy. Something Drury could never do in real life, you've just done before World War II even started. Before Japan could even finish off China. Before the Spanish Civil War could end. Brought to you by the stupid communists in Russia. So after doing that, you might be asking, well, if you killed him so early on, then what the hell is the challenge? Well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, there really isn't a challenge anymore. Your civilian, your uh, industry is basically doubled at now. And once the compliance goes up, you'll have like millions of men. And guys, you are not going to believe this. If you let the play game for another week, you will magically go back to January 1st of noon. And you'll be ahead of all the others. It's crazy, isn't it? No, I'm, I'm just kidding, but I've, I'm here because I forgot to record the outro and uh, I didn't save the game. So I just decided to go into the console command and annex everybody. So it looks like we did this, but we actually didn't in this save anyway. So if you like the video, please like it. I would appreciate it. And if you really, really, really like it, why not subscribe? Okay, this is a bit awkward now, so uh, bye.